That sounds like it's in my headphones. I believe that's where you intended to deliver it. Yep. Look at this! Two days in a row. That's a... That might be a routine right there. I mean, we're trying. You might even get used to something like that. Mm -hmm. You might even get yourself some kind of a... You know, combination of things you do in the morning. Uh, you might get your favorite breakfast cereal. You might get your f your favorite uh, breakfast beverage. You you might even cook a breakfast if you have the time on your hands. You might have a you might have a special spot you like to sit. You might you might like to sit outside. You might like to go to a bench, or you might even have a chair that you keep out front. A plate of smashed potatoes. You might even uh, reach for something like that. Uh -huh. And then you might throw this on. Exactly. And Kick back. That could be what takes place. So especially two days, especially if it's something you can count on. So I sure hope they can count on it, Will. Mm -hmm. I sure hope the consistency can remain because I'm worried every so often we get rolling on this and you then you tell me you got to take a break. And I say, hey, man. <laughs> hey, I say, hey, man, you got responsibility over here. Yeah. All right, what do we got first up? Uh, let's check this one out here. Wait a second. Well, what? You maniac. You come right at me with this. Uh huh. The Mini Vision Urbanaut, the virtual vision becomes tangible reality. Yes. You're coming out of left field today. This is the one. That is a concept vehicle. Uh huh. It looks kind of like that canoe vehicle. It does, yeah. Which but it, a little friendlier, I guess, because it's rounder. Okay. All right. I'll give you that. A little bit more. Um, the other one had a kind of, like, you've landed on a planet, and this is the people mover on Mars. Like, that's kind of what the canoe vehicle looked like. This concept vehicle looks a little bit more uh, closer to what we see right sure, now. Sure, yeah. Maybe. So, it looks more utopian. This one? Yes. Compared to uh, Canoes. Canoes is more dystopian. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Well, the Canoe one, they say, is for real as well. You can put your uh, payment down. I know they had all, they had a few uh, little re rearrangement going on as far as the management was concerned. A couple mm -hmm. people left, but they're... They're taking your money on a pre-order, and they got a starting price on a lifestyle vehicle of thirty-four thousand seven hundred fifty dollars. Uh -huh. The van is coming back. People yes. want the utility and space-carrying capabilities of the van with the EV aspect. So, what is this Mini, which of course is a BMW brand? Am I right mm -hmm. about that? Yes. They're showing off a lot of glass here on this one. Very, uh, probably feels very spacious. Oh, it's a, it's a lifestyle car. Oh, I just noticed the <laughs> did yoke. You, did you see that? I noticed the yoke as well. Were they just fishing out of this vehicle? Oh, yeah. What? It, okay. A lot of felt now or, I, or textures. I fully understand clothing. your utopian description. You know what I mean? Like all the colors are very pastel. They're, They're fishing. They're fishing out the back of it. These people don't fish. Stop it. These <laughs> models aren't fi aren't yeah. fishing. Stop it. Uh, well, One I'm, day. Listen, man. Yeah. In a utopia. It's true. We all do the modifications so we look as good as these people. And then next thing you know, we're fishing and chilling and we're doing all the things we should be doing in our uh, mini concept vehicle. Look, man. Nobody knows what to do. These companies don't know what to do. Mm-hmm. They, they're, they're, everyone's throwing something out there. They're saying, okay, we care about the future. We care about sustainability. We care about the environment. We had to say something about this electric stuff that's going on. You know, we're an automaker. We've been here. We got to say something about this because it's obvious the world cares. And this is a quick way to get there. You do a concept vehicle and you say, look, see how much we care. We're doing it. We're doing things. Mm -hmm. And so that's what There's this, no dash. It's uh, no meters, nothing. What are you? I feel like I can take a nap up there. <laughs> yeah, right here. I feel like I could take a nap up okay, there. Yeah. And but the a passenger seat doesn't look super safe. I hate to break it to you. Like where right, yeah. 
Where is the airbag? I have questions, but it's a concept sure. vehicle. You should you should have questions. Maybe these things are so autonomous and so safe, and they becomes it explodes into a cloud if it crashes. So it is the airbag. Of course. I'm just saying things. You can meditate back there. I do like the living room aspect. This idea of the living room on wheels. I know it's not going to satisfy the likes of our pals, the straight pipes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're more inclined towards uh, the rumbling and the bumbling. And of course, the, the drifting and the donuts and such. And this is not the vehicle for that. Would you imagine yourself living in here for... Yeah, I could week? live in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, could, I could spend time Looks so there. friendly. The only thing I will say... As far as a lifestyle vehicle is concerned, it's very exposed. You know the people who are doing the van life stuff with the uh, uh, adventure type vans? I got one of those as, as well. Uh -huh. It The key with it is it's relatively private. Sure, when yeah. When you need to be in it for a while or, or let alone sleep in it, like this thing is, they need some sort of a curtain system. You hit a button and like privacy. The glass kind of just auto tints. That, that would be what we would need. And maybe this concept has it in there. So what do they say about it? Are they going to make it or they're just showing off? I think this is just a concept. Yeah, They're, they're playing around with it yeah. as just the idea of the future car where it's kind of like a lifestyle. Look at you leading with the concept you know? car. Mm -hmm. Look at you taking risks out here on Lou later. Unbelievable. What well, we I would totally drive it. What we got next? Very cool. Today's sponsor... Honey, this is all about saving you some cash when you shop online. Everybody's shopping online. Look at the reviews on the uh, Chrome store. 163930 because you know what gets people excited? Saving money, well. Everybody wants to do that. There's not a single person that doesn't want to do that. And this is an easy way to do it without really too much effort or energy on your behalf. Once you have it installed and you've added it to Chrome on your browser, it's working. In a, it's just doing its thing. Yep. Dirty I know you. Have, I know you have a story, and you don't want. And I'm getting. Too, I'm excited. Okay, Will has a story. He didn't tell me yet because he claims he saved a bunch of money recently with Honey. And I said, okay, well, tell me about it on the actual ad. Don't tell me. Tell me about it now because yeah. there's we got the sponsor. People want to know how yeah. you saved money using Honey. So go ahead, let us know. Uh, well, I was trying to buy some prints online for my new house. Oh, really? And. Uh, I was trying to wait for a July 4th sale, which is usually pretty good. And I used Honey and I got some other promo code that got me like saving a couple hundred dollars. Okay. It's, it, it's insane. So it's like a Cyber Monday deal that they didn't take out. Okay. So, but. so there was already a promo. Mm -hmm. And then Honey found an extra promo, which could be applied anyway, even though there was already a promo. Yes. For that date. Yeah, which was way better than the July 4th one. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah, it was a good time. And now you finally have some decorations to put up. Yes, in of your, course, yeah. Because finally. it's barren in there. Yeah, and that's very cold. Yeah, you can't, that's not a good situation. So thanks to Honey, you sorted yep. that whole thing out. Mm -hmm. And you finally pulled the trigger. Honey sports over 30,000 stores online. So maybe you buy a print like Will, but you'd be surprised. It's all these major retailers. Uh, you, you'd be surprised what it's capable of finding mm -hmm. and this type of savings that can uh, can show up. It's a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. You no longer have to manually search for coupon codes. Codes That's a thing of the past. You could be on any of your favorite sites. You uh, Honey supports, like I said, 30,000 different stores. When you check out, the Honey button drops down, and all you have to do is click Apply Coupons. That's it. It's a one-click situation. It's already working. Wait a few seconds. Honey searches for the coupons that it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch as your price drops. Uh, you can save maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred dollars just like Will did. Honey has found its over 17 million members, over $2 billion in savings. You're a part of that now, Will, with your recent story. Oh, yeah. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's free to install. It takes a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting this show right here. So that's good as well. Get Honey for free right now at joinhoney.com slash later. That's joinhoney.com slash later, Or visit the link in the description. Don't forget slash later to let them know that we sent you. It's joinhoney.com slash Lou later to get honey for free.
Apple Watch saves life of a woman by detecting the Widowmaker heart attack, which was not felt by the wearer. Mm -hmm. Widowmaker is a name, a, dis a descriptive term, I guess, for a certain type of heart attack. Right. Which would, uh, which would kill people, obviously, creating, therefore, widows. Once more, the Apple Watch was triumphant in preventing a tra tragedy befalling a family by alerting a woman of a heart attack that she did not realize had taken place. The wearer who resides in Michigan states that the smartwatch alerted her to a high heart rate, prompting her to seek medical attention and later finding out what it was. Uh, her heart rate was at 169 beats per minute. Uh, and then, and I happen to know, I do a little exercise here and there. That's a, that's a heart rate right there. Mm -hmm. You get up to that 169, you're breathing pretty good. You're going pretty good. I think my peak is like in the, in the high 180s at like full like just going after it. What were you doing? Just running? Oh, just uh, biking, biking, like on the on the uh, what do you call those bikes? Like a a stationary bike, right? Indoor bike. Yeah. Uh, but most days I'm not even feeling that. Most days I'm looking at one. If I'm looking at 180, I'm like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Like I I would just take it up to I don't know 120, 130, something mm -hmm. like that. But. I mean, if you're doing serious exercise and you're used to getting your heart up around here, but if you're just chilling like this woman and the watch knows you're just chilling and it sees 169, it's going to say, hey, go go take a look at this. Yeah. I mean, I think um, with a male heart attack, it's like what's described as they feel like an elephant on their chest. But with the female heart attack, there's swelling in the left foot. There's some acid reflex. And uh, yeah vacuum and put muscles out of wax somehow it was like pain my goodness this is a yeah that's different but they, somehow she just went to the hospital and then they're like yeah you're having a heart attack and they fixed her up and she's ready to go i guess they had to do surgery or no the emergency room gave her aspirin after further examinations determined that she had a blockage in the mm -hmm. Widowmaker artery. Okay, so there's an actual artery that goes by that terminology as well. That You don't want to have that one blocked up. Yes. Feenstra credits the Apple Watch for saving her life. As she says, that on the wearable, you can easily monitor your heart rate. Yeah. Crazy, wild stuff. I mean, we're going to hear more and more of this. Uh, it's not just... I mean, this one, we've had heart rate for a long time, but you also have the, the new uh, trackers in there for ECG and whatnot. Mm -hmm. for even more analysis of one's heart, but uh, certainly cool. And uh, I just add this one to the to the list of yeah. people that have benefited from these types of uh, these types of warnings. She got it as a birthday gift from her husband. Look at that. Nice. He saved her life. Nice little story. Him and Tim saved yeah. her life. Here's a poll from nine to five Mac. Would you prefer an iPhone with touch ID under the screen? or on the power button. Oh, an interesting little an interesting little decision here. Mm -hmm. I know people have been resistant to the idea of an in-display fingerprint scanner mm -hmm. on the iPhone for whatever reason. I mean, we see it all over the place elsewhere. Um, and you used one before. In How reliable is it? Don't you use it as well? <laughs> I do use oh, it. Yeah, I'll yeah, give yeah. you my opinion. I just want to hear yours. It's so when when the marketplace transitioned from the like rear mounted fingerprint scanner to the in display, um, or obviously you had you had it on the front when you used to have a bezel on the phone. I did recognize that it was a little bit less responsive than the rear mounted. Um, it just, you had to just be a slightly more deliberate about your placement, but it is something you totally get the hang of. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and you, but, but, but for me, many times what I would do is I would just enable like a dual system. So I would have the in display unlock and the face unlock turned on and whichever triggered first, yes. I would unlock via that. Um, it is a cool technology in a sense that from when you first see it, you're like, wow, how did they mm -hmm. manage such a thing under the display? So there was a, a slight novelty factor there. But then I've used the side-mounted button ones too, and I'm okay with that. And they actually function, at least in my experience, a little bit more like a rear-mounted uh, fingerprint scanner. So 
I don't feel super strongly in either direction here. The only thing I would say is at the moment, Apple does have a button fingerprint scanner on the iPad there, yes. which you're showing the picture of. It does not have an in-display fingerprint scanner. Mm -hmm. So there is some experience and expertise there. And all, all I can think is that maybe the in-display stuff is just not up to their criteria. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, as you know, there's been reports in the past of people recording their fingerprint with a screen protector on, on there and then having it unlocked unknowingly because the, it was originally recorded through. You know what I'm saying? There, yes. It's not yep. absolutely perfect. So maybe... There's a feeling that the in button one is ever so slightly more secure. Oh, we have some results from the poll. Even <laughs> yeah, better. I, I mean, <laughs> the audience of this show, they can vote, but 9 to 5 Mac has some pretty decent numbers on the responses. 48% want it under the screen and 29% want it on the power button. 18% mm -hmm. say, I just want face ID, leave me alone. 3% uh, say they want touch ID on the back of the phone and 1% said other. So I don't know why you can reply other with such a... Yeah. poll like this i have to go read your comment now Ten thousand votes so that's significant um okay. i mean people under want the screen. screen under the screen is way better like it looks cool too it's like it's sleek i i guess with the power button it's sleek as well but the idea of it I you think know, i think for me less, it was uh, more it was just more around the fact that they've avoided it for so long and uh, assuming that there's some reason for it that it didn't wasn't a good fit for them. They meet their requirements. I don't know. Maybe. That's only that's where my thinking came from, and the fact that they put out the the non in display the button base for the iPad. But I yeah, if if I was to start from scratch with none of not considering what they have and haven't done to this point, in display makes the most sense because the rest of the market did it for mm -hmm. the the vast majority of the market has done it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Interesting. Andy Jassy officially takes over Amazon as Amazon CEO from Jeff Bezos. Yeah, I guess this thing, man, it takes a while to untangle such a thing. If you're uh, Jeff Bezos, CEO of and founder of one of the biggest companies, period, and one of the more complex companies to operate, I'm sure. Holy moly, man. Amazon. Anyway, so the report that he was going to step down, that was... Uh, a while ago, right? Mm -hmm. It was maybe a month ago, a couple months ago. It was mm -hmm. a while ago, and it appears that uh, few few loose ends had to be tied up, and now he's being succeeded by Andy Jassy. Now, this guy, Andy Jassy, what was his background? He oh, here we go. He joined the company shortly after graduating from Harvard Business School, and has late oh yeah, that's right. He so he was the AWS guy. Mm -hmm. He did. He played a huge role. I mean, he ran the AD, AWS component for Amazon, and it has been growing rapidly yes. and a big time profit center for them. I don't know if you see all the advertisements they're doing now. They're like, "Oh, your favorite company runs on AWS." Yeah. I don't know if you knew that. You should too. Yeah, I feel like actually, come to think of it, I feel like one of our sponsors, Hello Fresh, was part of that commercial because they run on AWS oh, yeah? as well. I believe so. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's so many different uh, Adidas was in that commercial. It's like so many of your favorite apps and products are uh, running on AWS. And you can thank, I presume you can thank Andy Jassy for some of that. So it is significant that he is the successor because it showcases uh, an emphasis and attention to that part of their business, which might be surprising to some that think of Amazon solely as this retailer solely is this place where you buy things and they get delivered to you. Uh, it appears Amazon views themselves as quite a bit more than that mm -hmm. and views their opportunity in that space as a uh, big and important. And I guess with Bezos, he's just going to work on blue origin. He's going to go to space. I have a funny feeling he'll still be quite involved in Amazon here and there. Yeah. I think he'll find a way to still be involved, but certainly he can spend a little bit, a little bit more time on space in space mm -hmm. reading about people's uh, petitions to keep him in space. Exactly. Yeah. He has a lot of time to read those petitions now. Mm -hmm. I saw this story. The uh, UFC signed, this is re reportedly, I don't know, sources with knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. UFC inks $175 million crypto deal 
within its largest sponsorship deal ever. This is with Crypto.com. Crypto.com actually reached out to us about this show right here. Mm. I was curious myself. I haven't used Crypto.com. Maybe people can let me know in the comments uh, what they think about it if they use Crypto.com and what their experience has been. But uh, they're going big time on this sponsorship deal. Uh, you may remember in the past that the UFC had their outfit partnership with Reebok, Reebok. Yep. and it was kind of controversial, I guess. I don't know. Maybe that's the wrong word, but it was just at the time prior to the Reebok deal, fighters could wear and se sell their own sponsorships and wear those badges on their clothing. Mm -hmm. And depending on the popularity of a particular fighter, of course, they could charge, figure out how much to charge for those sponsorships on their own clothing. Then when the Reebok deal came along, it was they had to create a whole new business structure around how these payments would take place. So champions would get a different rate for having worn the Reebok gear versus people who it was their first fight. And then they had a couple specialty deals with the really big stars who I guess were um, the most influential. But, but they try to streamline the whole aspect of like no brands, just Reebok. Just Reebok. In the ring. And they try to make octagon. it almost like a jersey that you could buy. Sure, yeah. But I don't, I just, it's hard in fighting. There's so much personality. It's an individual sport. The team aspect of buying a jersey, I never, mm -hmm. it was always hard to know if it was going to work out. And then Reebok as a company was having its own struggles. As we've talked about on this show a number of times, um, under the umbrella of Adidas, trying to figure out, carve out its niche. It was playing with the CrossFit thing. And then I think that there was a thinking that maybe the fighting lined up with that. But either way, you heard a variety of opinions from fighters ab about their feeling regarding mm -hmm. Reebok. Either way, money and support for this group of individuals is obviously much needed. And one way to achieve that is... is through deals like this, at the scale like this. I mean, $175 million, I don't know what the distribution will be. I don't think it says. I think that's still up in the air. And it, it's the latest partnership between a sports entity and a rapidly growing world of cryptocurrency investing, which has gained prominence and popularity during the pandemic. The Miami Heat, for example, recently announced a long-term partnership with FTX.us. The crypto ex exchange also bought naming rights to the team's arena whoa so the heat arena will be called the ftx mm -hmm. the montreal canadians nfl quarterback trevor lawrence and ml mob are others that have signed deals in the industry so it's kind of, it's getting mainstream no doubt about it mm -hmm. it's getting mainstream but then on the flip side as you know will it's also still kind of there's a lot of unknowns there and there have been reports of promotions and partnerships that turned out to maybe not be all that great or all that uh, lucrative. Tr uh, trustworthy. Like, trustworthy, yeah. yeah be, like there were, there were a couple of deals where people were like, oh, you're influencers are pumping altcoins. And it's yeah. just a controversial mm -hmm. subject at the moment. And you're dealing with people's cash. You're dealing with people's wallets. And it's always going to be sensitive when you're dealing with people's wallets. Mm -hmm. And so... Uh, there's not, I mean, there's nothing in this investment game or, or exchange game or stock trading game. There's nothing in there uh, stopping you from, from ruining your life uh, if, you, if you choose to. I mean, it's up to yeah. the responsible individual, but it is kind of an interesting crossover here. For sure. And the amount of money is key because you know it had to be part of the consideration if you're UFC. Like Reebok is, okay, well, it's a sports brand. It lines up. It's fairly obvious and easy. But when you when when a cryptocurrency company reaches out to you, you're like, All right, you know, we'll consider what's your offer, and mm -hmm. they're like, let us show you our offer, mm -hmm. and then and then Dana White and the others and um, what is it Endeavor Group, and they're all like, we're listening, mm -hmm. and then and then Crypto.com is like, how does 175 million dollars over the next 10 years sound, and then they're like. We're we're that'll, listening. We're still. That'll, that'll do it. They're like we're still listening. Yeah. Believe it or not, we're still listening. I mean, a ten-year deal. That's a that's a long investment. Yeah, it's huge, man. You know? It's going to be a lot of crypto.com badges all yes. over the place in it's the gonna UFC. It's going to replace the monster badge. In the I think. Of the listen, I think it's going to work for them, man. As far as getting the, getting the word out there, and for they, sure. they have a pretty nice URL. Crypto.com is a pretty nice URL. Uh -huh. 
So we'll see how that plays out. We'll see how the fighters feel about it. I'm curious. Uh, I want to hear some of their takes. And also, if there's if we get any kind of indication as far as what the split looks like, mm-hmm. what portion of the 175 million uh, they they get to... Yeah, let's uh, see how that looks like. They get to partake in. Yeah. One plus Nord. You're skipping to One Plus Nord. You're going back to the One Plus Nord. One Plus Nord Two officially announced with a MediaTek processor. Interesting. This will be the first MediaTek powered One Plus phone. It's like completing the whole, the whole sequence of events, becoming the. Oh, you like the preview? Just, the preview image. Yeah. What is this? Well, you know, like, we, you how, know. Yeah. You, I, I can't blame them. It's it's so hard. It's so hard to differentiate. Well, I don't even know. Did they share this teaser image or did this website, did Mashable just grab uh, like a mysterious smartphone? Oh, this is a very No, it's official. Oh, my God. (laughs) Okay, you're right. That's pretty wild. It's... uh, Can you describe it? (laughs) It's the most nondescript image ever. It is just the highlight of the outside of a phone. And it looks like every other phone, which is kind of the state of the phone business at this point. Either way... Uh, we knew that the Nord brand from OnePlus was all about uh, budget-minded stuff. We, mm-hmm. we we knew that it was all about making this stuff more accessible than the than the flagship territory that the main OnePlus brand is now a part of. But this is the full-scale move towards budget-mindedness, which is the move away from Qualcomm, which costs a few bucks, mm-hmm. and towards MediaTek, which uh, you often see just lower ticket prices with that chip inside or a chip from MediaTek. So I'm not all that surprised. But once you get into the budget landscape, then it gets really aggressive. Like people are doing tons of spec comparisons. Uh, Let's see. uh, Just scroll up a little bit more there. Uh, What that doesn't tell us very much, OnePlus also announced that Nord 2 would be the company's first phone to feature a MediaTek processor, more precisely the MediaTek Dimensity 1200 AI. Here's the quote. We've worked with MediaTek to build an exclusive AI enhanced experience that takes photography, display tech, and gaming to a new dimension. You see how they, that's dimensity. MediaTek dimensity, new dimension. Mm. Nord 2 5G, the flagship killer. Come on, we can't be. I don't even know about those terminologies anymore. Yeah. Flagship yeah. killer. I don't, it, it was like a very. It was a terminology that's very striking at the beginning. It was fitting at a time. Yes. At a time. But then now it's so many smartphones that it's Yeah, it's uh every phone's a flagship. I think people killer. people transition to value for money or like value king or something like this, mm-hmm. which kind of feels better to me at this point. But anyway, I suppose that that's some noteworthy news there. Yeah. What do you got next? Migration of 1,000 strong herd of sheep captured in epic drone footage. I knew you are going to bring some epic. Oh, my God. Look at that. Wow. That's so cool. Wait a second. Wait a minute here. Yeah. Wait a second here. Yeah. How did they, when they were funneling them through those gates. Wow. Is there a, I love is this there a clip. This is a fantastic clip. You've absolutely knocked it out of the park here. Yeah. It's a drone you, pilot, a photographer, Lior Patel from Israel. Works as a full-time commercial photographer and decided to focus on the farmyard animal for his latest project. I absolutely love this here. Um, uh, They're so orderly. Oh, consider, I guess this is where it, the thing comes from of uh, oh you're you're acting like a sheep or you're you're a sheep. Mm-hmm. Look how orderly they are, kind of on their own accord. Uh huh. It's quite amazing that they're somewhat cooperative, seemingly. Yes. I, don't, I don't know how much they're being influenced by the environment. Like I said early in that video clip. The the small little sections they had to cut through, but like look at them waiting. There must have been a gate there. Uh, yeah. Listen, either way, I'm all for this uh, type of content and uh, it gives you a perspective that you're, you're just, I mean, it, it's amazing that you have this regular everyday thing, which is the sheep, which are all over uh-huh. the place, yet you never look at them from up here and you never think of them as a, 
as an entire kind of organism or unit. And they almost yes. look like grains of rice from here. Uh huh. And this could be considered with like different types of organisms, like schools yeah. of fish. Yeah. Ants and even yeah. even us. Cells. Even us. Well. Yeah. Even us. It's a beautiful thing. Wonderful content. You knocked it out of the park. You hit an absolute home run. And so far, so good. I think the people owe you something for that. Maybe a thumbs up or something. Mm -hmm. Please. Uh, unless you're about to beat that with your As, next one. Uh, we'll see. Okay. Let's check out this one here. Uh, okay. Is this I want to hear your opinion. Wait a second. This. First of all, is this your last one? Yes. Last one. We are on designboom.com. Hang on a second. <laughs> what? But you just hit a home run, Will. <laughs> we can end off with that. You just well, look hit at this a home one. run. What are you going to sell this to me? Go ahead. Uh, so this is a flower pot as a designer item that you actually wear. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a plant on your back. How do you know this is real? It's There's a designer to it. How do you know mm. this is real? Like real, real? Uh, I, I don't. Can I buy it right now? Uh, for those people are wondering right now, there's there's a like a promo video for this product, this flower pot that you carry everywhere as a backpack. It's a promo you, video, and yeah, she's you strap wearing it on, and 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 it's like this good looking person playing with their hair and and having their having their plant with them at all yes. times. Do people have a relationship with their plant like this? I think so. I think a lot of people do. Do you have a relationship with a plant like this? Not me. Okay. No, so, but. Somebody uh, does. You, you wear it as an ornament, as some sort of fashion accent to uh, your your outfit. Wild. And you grow it. It's a wearable vase. And look at the, imagine the Instagram photos you can get. In, in front of the Eiffel Tower. Is it healthy for the plant? I mean, how long does the plant, uh, is it is is the plant robust enough to live a, as part of this portable vase? Like, aren't the leaves and things falling off what about when you set it down what if you sit down accidentally it's all getting scraped and killed yes <laughs> absolutely but uh in the face of fashion it doesn't really matter right it doesn't <laughs> i guess not yeah i mean maybe for maybe for a real statement every once in a while but if, uh, if all of a sudden you show up to work, you show up to work <laughs> every day up with a couple of these and it's just like your usual self, except mm -hmm. every day your plant goes with, with you, just like how Otis goes with you yeah, or your hat or whatever is your normal attire. And then a plant is a part of it. First, I'm going to be like, wow, uh, -huh. uh, very ambitious. There's dirt involved. There's water involved. And then eventually, I'm just going to be like, can we be done with this plant already? Eventually, it's going to be very overwhelming. But what if it uh -oh. was like a... Just raise his finger like this. Yeah. A fruit plant. Mm. Or like a, a veggie <laughs> plant where I can just uh, reach, give you a tomato. <laughs> you know, it takes a while to grow How, a tomato, right? Does that work that way? You know, it takes a while to grow. Once you... It's going to take, you know... It's not like it will always be bearing fruit unless you have some GMO, some serious GMO <laughs> stuff going on. Otherwise, I'm that's gonna, what this is filled with. I'm gonna yeah. wipe out your tomatoes on day one. Otherwise, yeah. uh, I believe your last one with the migration was a home run. This is uh, this is more okay. of, this is more of a bunt. Yeah. Do, do you know what a bunt is? A little little bit of a strike. Not a strike. Or a hit. A hit. <laughs> <laughs> I, I no, I'm it. kidding. I'm kidding. It's interesting. I can't believe. Uh, you know? It's the internet, man. It's all out there, and I'm just happy that. Uh, it exists. I'm happy that things exist and people can make whatever they want. For sure. And design whatever they want. And that people can wear plants on their back if they feel it to be necessary. That's I love that. It's a good time. I love that.